What's going on everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today I get to talk about my top 10 graphic novels that emotionally moved me, whether it's the entire graphic novel or whether it's just scenes from a graphic novel. So, join me. And welcome back everybody. Now, today is a really difficult video to put together. Um, Rereading a lot of these brought back some memories, but it's a video that a lot of people have asked me to do, and it came from, recently I've been reading a lot of emotional graphic novels, whether it was The End, or Keeping Two, or The Mace Book, and just shook me to the core and reminded me of the beauty of graphic novels and how powerful they can be. Now, this was a hard list to put together because I'm pretty emotional. I mean, I, 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 I cry quite often at reading books, whether it's a certain scene, uh, whether it's X-Men, whether it's an original graphic novel, it doesn't matter. So, a lot of you ask me, hey, why don't you put together a list of your top 10 emotional comics or moments in comics or in collected edition or in graphic novel format? And I said, sure. That was two years ago. Because I wanted to... <laughs> I try to keep positive on this channel, but I guess it is part of the positivity, and I'll, or Uncanny Omar talk pretty one day, the positivity and honesty of this channel is that, yeah, these stories here, they shook me to the core. Now, the important thing when I'm talking about these books is that these are filled with spoilers because I can't talk about these moments, and sometimes it's, it's one scene in a comic book that really broke me down. So, what I'm going to do is in the description of the video, I'm going to leave timestamps for the books I'm going to be talking about. So, if you don't want to know anything about them, by all means, please jump around the timestamps. If you've read the books, go ahead and watch it. Or if you don't care about spoilers, then I guess watch the whole thing. And in the comments, leave me what some of your most powerful graphic novels have been that just teared you up. And if you enjoy this, maybe I can do it again because I have a lot of books really this was a hard list to put together but let's go ahead and get started and smash that like button please if you haven't subscribed and you're new to the channel go ahead and subscribe we put out videos every day now let's begin blankets by Craig Thompson published by drawn and quarterly this is a book that you've seen on the channel quite a number of times for the last few years we've done an old reader new reader this is one of my favorite graphic novels of all time and it is a coming-of-age story about Craig and Raina. It's a long distance relationship between both of them. And what really got me here though was the relationship between Craig and his brother, his younger brother, and how they kind of drifted apart the older they got. And a lot of memories kept coming back to Craig as to why they drifted apart or what really happened in their childhood. And then of course, the moments with Raina and him connecting with her on an emotional level that he had never connected with anybody outside of his family with. And then, of course, the heartache of losing that first love, that summer love, that that long-distance relationship that you are trying to hold on to, and it's just so heartbreaking. I, lo I love this story. It's one that I've pushed on people, and absolutely, this one uh, broke me down. But then again, all of these broke me down. Otherwise, they wouldn't have made it on this list, but the entirety of this book is just beautiful and yeah there was some manly eye sweat with this one spider-man blue by jeff loeb and tim sale published by marvel comics damn what can i say about this book this is another one that uh, you've seen on my channel and it's one that is heartbreaking to, to read because you know that Gwen Stacy died, and this is a story about Peter Parker dealing with that through a series of tapes that he leaves her. He's talking to Gwen Stacy on this cassette tape that he's recording. It's a little voice recording. And he's reliving all those moments with Gwen Stacy in his past when he was Spider-Man, when he was Peter Parker. But the moment that freaking got me on this was the very last part when... This is when Peter Parker's married to Mary Jane. And she realizes that he's talking to Gwen. And I don't know how long she's known, but at the very end, she sees him in the attic when he's recording the voice to, to Gwen Stacy. And she said, tell Gwen I miss her. And tell her I said hi. 
oh man, the realization that your wife knows that there's this deep love and connection that you can't let go with your dead ex. Wow. What a woman. What a, what a, what a powerful comic. Now, Marvel has recently announced that they're doing a gallery edition of this. So if you want to cry ugly tears, now you can cry them on top of your big gallery edition coming out next year. Fun Home, a family tragic comic published by Mariner Books. This is by Alison Bechtel. Now, this is a memoir slash graphic novel, and it is about the life of Allison when she was 10 years old and when she was in college, and it bounces back and forth. And it's about her family, and it's called Fun Home because the family owns a funeral home, and that's what the kids called it. Her father, Bruce, is not only the owner of this funeral home, but he's also a part-time English teacher. Uh, he loves to fix the house up and has a lot of projects. And even though it's about the family dynamic, it's really the story of her father and her. So it starts off with her like at the very beginning and her father's catching her in the swimming pool. And there's a lot of contrast with historical literature. So actually each chapter is named after some famous book, whether it's a line from the book or whether it's the title of the book. So throughout this particular graphic novel, you get to learn more about her and the growing distance in her relationship with her father and how horrible he was to her family. Now, part of this, as you come to learn, is that he was a closeted gay man. And she's the exact opposite. When she goes into college, she's a proud lesbian and she wants to reconnect with her father. Now, early on, you find out that her father commits suicide. So the story is about her dealing with that and going back and trying to figure out what pretty much grew them apart. Um, but the last chapter, I thought, was just beautifully done because it's, it's kind of like the story of Icarus. Um, they're driving around. They're talking about movies that they love. They're talking about plays. She gives them a, like she gives them a book, and he gives her a book, and they just have a beautiful father-daughter moment. And the last part, oh man, the last part broke me when he's catching her, and in the end, you know, she she learned that her father fell, but he was always there to catch her. And I think as a father, that's what you do for your kids. You're, you're there to catch your children. Beautiful book, and I did not expect uh, to, to love it as much as I did, and it really broke me down, that, especially that last part. Day Tripper by Gabrielle Ba and Fabio Moon, published by DC Comics. I've talked about this one. We've done an old reader, new reader on it. I've done an overview of The Absolute beautiful story. So just a quick little synopsis of this. It is the story of Bras de Olivias Dominguez. He lives in Brazil and every issue ends with a death and it's his death. So it's at different points of his life, whether he's a kid or whether he's an adult or an old man. And with each death, it's like you're learning more and more about him and his connection um, to all these supporting casts. It's a book that really tore me up and it's a book that's a reminder of how beautiful life is because you never know when it will be taken from you. You never know when it's going to end, at what point. The, I mean, it's it's almost, yes, yeah, of course, it is sci-fi, but it feels more like a memoir, like I'm reading someone's memoir, that you're able to put all these pieces together and make one big lifetime out of this man. Uh, beautiful moving book. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, it's one that's available in trades and um, absolute edition of the Lux hardcover. Do yourself a favor and check it out. Absolutely recommend this one. And it brought me to tears, especially that last part with his father and the gift that he gives him. That I won't spoil. The Best We Could, an illustrated memoir by Thie Bui and it is published by Abrams Comics Arts. So this is the story of Thie Bui and her family. It is a memoir about her family's immigration from Vietnam to the United States during the Vietnam War. So a lot of this takes place in the 70s, and it's about a search for a 
better future, not just for yourself, but for your children. And also remembering your past. It, it, it explores the anguish of immigration because it's not as easy as a lot of people think, whether you're trying to come to the country or whether you're from the country and seeing immigrants. And it's a reminder of my past. I immigrated from Peru at a very young age with my brother. My mom and dad gave up everything to come here. And they gave up their friends, their careers, their family, just to make our lives better. So this one broke me in a different level because it's a reminder of the sacrifices that we make for a better life, not for ourselves, but for our children. And it also it was a reminder of my friend uh, who's from Vietnam and his parents went through a lot of the things that the parents go through here. There's a whole state of depression that they talk about that not everybody talks about when speaking of immigration. It's not just all glamor and, 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 and success. There's a lot of rough patches and a lot of bumps along the road. Bui writes this with so much love and admiration when talking about her relatives and their past lives and what made them come here. Yeah, it, this one, um, this one hit me in a different level. I was really misty-eyed while, while I was reading this one, and it just uh, it hit clo very, very close to home. Why the Last Man? Again, big spoilers, because I am going to be talking about the final issue in this one. Uh, so if you've not read it, do yourself a favor. Do not judge it on the TV show. They did not get the point. But Why the Last Man is a powerful story about a possible future where... Pretty much, the uh, there are no more men, and the only male is York and his pet monkey Ampersand. So it is their journey to try to repopulate the world. There's nothing funny about it. It's a really good take on a possible future that's ruled by women, and holy crap, there are a lot of sad moments in here. But the one I'm going to be talking about is the final issue. So in the final issue. You know, he's an old man, and he's having flashbacks of his life with 355, their journey, and in this scene, of course, Ampersand is old. He's an old monkey, and it's time to let go, so he goes and visits the the tree for at uh, 355. This one's rough to talk about, <laughs> and as he's going to visit this tree, uh, he is giving Ampersand... A, a grape so he can just pass and oh man that broke me down to see just you know putting down a pet and, 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 he, and I know that Ampersand to him was more than a pet he was somebody, somebody that went on this journey with him but at journey's end oh my gosh and he was doing the humane thing so Ampersand wouldn't suffer anymore oh and the look on his face that that phew, talking about it is rough and then of course the final the final page alas that's how it started right with him in that jacket and he finally is able to get himself out of it alas oh beautiful ending to a beautiful book God Country by Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw published by Image Comics another one that I've talked about so often on this channel. Uh, it is the story of Emmett, who is suffering from Alzheimer's. He's being visited by his family, and he cannot remember his granddaughter. He cannot remember his son. He's a widow. He can't remember his dead wife. A magical sword appears. He picks it up, and he's able to remember everything. So it's this big fight between these gods that want their sword back, and Emmett trying to defend his family, because as soon as he picks it up, he remembers everything and he doesn't want to let go of that but every adventure comes to an end so when Emmett is dying he gives his son the most beautiful gift he could give somebody and that is his memories and his experience he gives it to him through the sword and as soon as Roy his son picks up that sword he is able to experience everything all his father's feelings when the when Roy was a child, his emotions, his thoughts, what a beautiful gift. Like, if you could let your kids know how you really feel, how much love you have for them, 
I mean, what a wonderful gift to give them. Because they will never know. I mean, the, of course, I know how much my parents love me, and, I, and my kids know how much I love them, but I mean, to really know your thoughts and your feelings and everything and your fears, and to gift them that, oh man. And for anybody that has family that is suffering from dementia and all, or Alzheimer's, it's a, it's a it's a tough book. This one that 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 scene really hit me hard, and the the whole story is beautiful. But man, yeah, that one got me. Strangers in Paradise by Terry Moore, published by Abstract Studios. This to me always felt like the independent comic. When I think of manga in the Western world, I always think of this being the very first. American comic that had that manga feel. So, uh, this is another one that I've talked about um, in the past, and it is basically a love story about Francine and Kachu. Now, it's a long love story because along the way you meet other characters like David, Freddy, Brad, Molly, Casey, just to name a few, but I don't care. In the end, it is about Kachu and Fr uh, Francine. Now, there are moments in here that I really, you know, I teared up on. Because uh, it is a beautiful love story, but the one that got me, the one that just destroyed me, is there's a, there's a part here where um, Francine is pregnant, and she's just going to, for a regular checkup. And it is the nightmare that any parent fears when going to a checkup, that when doing the ultrasound, they can't hear the baby's heartbeat. So... The doctor comes in and tells her what's going on and she tells her you know your baby is dead and that's all she hears and then the doctor explains things and through a series of word bubbles you get to see Francine just stop listening and then she starts imagining things imagining the possibilities all these dreams she had about holding her child playing with her kid her kid playing baseball or just snuggling with her they are just shattered, and they're done without words. They're just, oh my gosh. I, I, not to get too personal, but I, I, I that hit on a different note because we, you know, I, I went through something like that, and um, and for anybody that has ever gone through something like that, I'm sorry. It's uh, it's something that you'll always remember. So, um, yeah, that's why I made the list. Lost at Sea by Brian Leo Miley, published by Oni Press. Now, this is before he wrote Scott Pilgrim or Seconds. So, if you're a fan of his Scott Pilgrim, this is nothing like Scott Pilgrim. This is more of a serious and beautiful road trip story. So, you're thrown in the middle of the story, and I'll say that this one really doesn't have a definitive ending and this is the story of Riley who claims that she doesn't have a soul and the only way to get that soul back is to find the perfect cat that's what she tells people but she doesn't really tell people anything she really doesn't talk to anybody she's taking a road trip with some classmates that she really doesn't know much about so they're almost like near strangers so through this road trip, you get to find out more about her and Stephanie, um, the other girl that's in the car with them, and they're just going across North America. She's leaving California, and you get to find out that in California, she was visiting uh, her boyfriend, and she finds a letter, and it's just a story about finding yourself at that age and it reminded me of all the road trips my friends and I would take and I, I read this um, this was published about oh my goodness 13 14 years oh that's got to be longer than that now um, I guess maybe almost 20 years ago but I read this about 10 years ago and it just started reminding me of that part of my life where I didn't know who I was and then who the hell does know who they are at that age of 18 and the road trips I would take with my friends and the bond that we would grow. And that's what this was. So I guess in the end, you know, this is either a book about a coming of age or a book about a road trip and building relationships. But in the end, what got me 
is I realize that this isn't a book, at least for me, about those things, but it's more of a book about coming home. And it's perfectly done. And it was like looking into a time machine and reminding me of those, uh, those road trips. Wings by Shinosuke Tanaka, published by Purple Bear Books. I saved this for last because I did not want to uh, keep editing out the tears. This is a hard one to talk about. If you love animals and cannot stomach the thought of animals being hurt, well, maybe you shouldn't read Why the Last Man either, but definitely not Wings. But I think um, it's a beautiful reminder about our relationship with our pets. Uh, so this is one that uh, has no words, and it's all about a farmer and finding a box. Inside the box is this weird little puppy, and this puppy has wings. And... Farmer takes it home, shows it to his wife, they let the puppy stay, There's, they have another dog, and the puppy grows bigger and bigger, and the farmer goes on adventures with the puppy. And one day, the puppy is a dog now, and the dog with wings, and the other dog are walking around. Somebody's driving, doesn't pay attention, and almost runs them both over, but the dog with wings saves the other dog, and ends up dying in the process and all you see is that feather and that that hit the whole book hits and uh, when he t um, later you find out that he saved the other dog because she was carrying the puppies so she has puppies and they're a mixed breed of puppies and they have wings and then you see the old man hanging up his hat, and his hat has that one wing from the original dog, and, um, yeah, if you're a pet owner, nah, this one, this is, as soon as I open the book, it just reminds me of my dog, Nikita, and she didn't have wings, but she does now, so, all right, uh, if you're interested in purchasing any of these books, check out our sponsors. If you live in Europe and are interested in buying and pre-ordering Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC books within the EU, flat shipping rates of 11 euro and 90 cents for all EU countries, great customer service with sturdy packaging and emails answered within 24 hours. They also offer a superb selection of new titles and out of print books. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. For a limited time, you can use the code near mint condition, all one word, at checkout and get a 10 euros voucher for your first order over 40 euros. Waltz Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in europe Ting. cheapgraphicnovels.com your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50 percent off cover price they have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service check out their bargain deals for up to 90 percent off cover price and don't forget that cgn also takes pre-orders that way you don't miss out on the hottest releases and they are currently running a special promotion for you minties if you're a first-time customer after receiving your order confirmation email Reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the U.S. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my list of the top 10 graphic novels that made me cry or were powerful and just drove me to tears or I had misty eyes or manly eye sweat reading them the entire time. Let me know in the comments down below what has moved you to tears or what you would add to a list like this or if you read any of these books what moments touched you differently than the moments that touched me and yeah if you all want i can do this again maybe <laughs> maybe take a break and bring some happy books back um uh, but seriously um it's part of life right like it's, it's okay to have emotions like that so just want to remind everybody thank you all for being you for watching Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. <laughs>